Hello again everybody and in this video we are going to examine how to make an alarm that will only sound after certain things have happened. And the example we're going to use is a flame out alarm for your jet engine that will not just sound the alarm when you're trying to start up the engine or shut it down. Um, in my uh, models I use the pump voltage uh, so if it goes below 0.1 volts, I use that as the alarm for a flame out. And I'm quite happy with just letting it tell me a flamed out when I go to shut the engine down. I mean, it really doesn't bother me. But the point of this video is that some people want to get rid of all extraneous alarms. And if you're not used to jet operations, you might wonder why we need to be told the engine has stopped. Well, trust me, uh, I've been flying jets for 20 years and it can be incredibly hard to make out the noise of your jet engine over the noise of any other model that is running. Not just jets, but piston engines, electric ducted fans, even just electric prop models that have a noisy prop. And being told that your engine has flamed out could give you those vital three or four seconds extra to set up for the landing or getting it down in a safe place. And to use the video today, I'm going to be helped by this little device here that I made from the plans on the rc-thoughts.com website. It emulates telemetry sensors through the system because I'm not going to keep starting and stopping my jet engine in the garden whilst trying to video it to try to show you everything. So we'll just set up some parameters. And you might think, well, I just go to alarm, set, you know, alarm at the pump voltage less than whatever. Yes, but that's going to alarm when you shut the engine down. And of course, we're trying to get rid of that. So you think, well, I just put the switch in the alarm, which it allows you to do, of my trim high or run switch, whatever it is you use on your jets to high. Uh, that's fine. That will stop it sounding the alarm when you shut the engine down. But when you're ready to start up and you move the trim up or you're switched to the on position, it's going to sound the alarm again. I don't care because I know it's going to happen. But the whole point of this is for those people who just want to get rid of these sort of extraneous alarms. So I've got it set up on the model here. Let's go and have a little look at what we need to do. Uh, the first thing we need is for the telemetry to tell us that something has gone wrong. So if we go to telemetry alarms, sorry, telemetry controls, we come in here, default switch. Uh, I've set it to the test sensor. You would, of course, set it to your pump voltage, uh, exhaust gas temperature, RPM, whatever it is you like and set it to condition is x is greater than some value. I've put in here 60 just because I'm using the, the little test sensor. But what we're doing is telling it here that the engine has actually achieved its running condition. So this would be a pump voltage or an RPM or exhaust gas temperature valid when the engine is actually running. So, you know, has it hit it at some point, say 500 degrees or 50,000 RPM or a pump voltage is greater than, uh, you know, 0.1 of a volt, half a volt, whatever. And come down then, set the default to minus 100. That means if it's got any lost telemetry or it's not sure what to do, it'll output an off condition for it. That's fine. Now we come to our logical switches. And the first logic switch is the telemetry control. There's no input to the second in, and the condition is the A on, B off. Now the point of this is that when the engine achieves a running condition, this will switch on. It will not switch on until the engine has achieved its running condition as given to it by telemetry control 1. So. Just moving your trim to the up position or your run switch to the on position. Oh, sorry for that bump. Uh, 
will not allow this to switch on. It has to see one of those engine parameters achieving a running condition and it will switch on and nothing can switch it off. That's fine. So basically, once your engine's up and running, this logic switch switches on and it stays on. Press the right button, Harry. Come to logic switch two. Input number one is that logic switch one. And control number two is what you use to switch your engine on and off. I like to use the trim. I use one step trim button. I have a video about that. So I just press the button once. Let's get on. Button once, it's off. And the condition is AND. So basically the output of this logic switch can only switch on when both the trim is up and the engine has achieved its running condition. If the engine hasn't achieved its running condition, even though I've set it to the engine to its on position, this won't go on and it won't allow the alarm to sound. Once the engine's achieved its running condition and the trim is up, then it can allow the alarm to sound. At the end of the flight, this will still be on because the logic switch one cannot be switched off. But I'll switch the engine off, the output will go off, and the alarm cannot sound. OK. And then we go to our timers and sensors, alarms. Down here wouldn't be sensor one, it would be uh, your engine parameter. The condition x is less than or equal to some value. In here I've put 50. Remember we said 60 proves the engine is running, so 50 will prove the engine has gone off. So this is going to be a temperature, an RPM, or a pump voltage which is so low that it proves the engine is off. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't want to set it to zero RPM or 20 degrees Celsius. You'd still set it to some high value, but just below what a running engine could do. So maybe 350 degrees and 30,000 RPM, whatever, to suit your engine. Because you don't want to have to wait all that time for the lag to come through. Um, See, I use pump voltage, which means the ECU has sensed all these for me and shut the engine down. And the file will be whatever uh, file you like. I'll turn the volume up and play you the file. This is one I made again at the rc-thoughts.com website where they have a text-to-speech module. And so I have a file which says flame out three times. Flame out, flame out, flame out. Uh, repeat is off. I'll turn the volume down so you don't get all the beeping because I don't want it to keep saying flame out at me for the rest of the flight until the uh, the landing. That's why uh, it says the flame out three times in that WAV file. And the activation switch is that logic switch two that we made. And so now let's prove how the whole thing works. Uh, I will have to just reset the transmitter, will I? Let's have a little look. What did we do in the logic switch? Has it switched on yet? No, it hasn't. That's lovely. So everything is off. Trim is down. Let us assume we're ready to start the flight. I'll bring the trim up. We have a look at it there. There we are. So the I've now put the radio into the engine run condition. But the switch is off. So because that switch is off, and that's the one we're using in the alarm, even though the alarm can see that the value is not good. It would help if I plugged it in, wouldn't it? Get it running. There we are. So it can see that the value is zero, which is, of course is less than 50. The logic switch is off, so it cannot sound. Turn the volume up. There we are. Um, so if we go back, turn it off for the beeping. 
that's properties, logic switches. There we are. Now I will turn the uh, engine on. So I'm turning up the values. And there you can see MX1 has come on because the value has gone above the value of the telemetry control, which was set to 60. So the engine's up at 100 or something now. And of course, because logic switch one is on and the trim is up, because I want the engine to run, the alarm is on. Because that now, if we have a look here in alarms, we can see logic switch two is on, the alarm is good. Uh, let's prove that the alarm works. I will turn the value down and when it gets below 50. Flame out, flame out, flame out. Good. Now I can pop it back up again. Um, but let's assume we've uh, not had a flame out. The engine's still running. But we're going to bring the trim down to the off condition. So in here, we have a look. Logic switch one is stayed on. It will stay on. But I bring the trim down to shut down the engine. And there's no flame out warning. Because that switch has gone off. And therefore switch in the alarm has gone off and the engine runs down and there it is so that is an example of how the alarm can only work under certain conditions when something is running and you've get, got rid of the extraneous alarms if you've enjoyed this video please do uh, subscribe to the channel, like it, press the notification bells, etc. If you subscribe to the channel, but you haven't pressed the notification button, you won't get any uh, notifications that there's a new video, which is fine. If you press notification, don't worry that you're going to get constant beeps from new videos coming out. I do them very rarely now because most videos have been done. And if these have been helpful to you as well. Uh, there is a little link below where you can uh, donate to my espresso and chocolate biscuit fund, which would be very much appreciated. So have fun with this one, folks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.